Dear friends, may God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of peace, the Spirit of forgiveness, the Spirit of mercy, the Spirit of compassion, the Spirit of love, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May He come to lead this meditation, our meditation here. You who are participating of this live transmission, and you who are going to watch it later on, at any time of the day or night, you can watch this video because God through the Holy Spirit speaks He speaks to you and He speaks to me I don't know why God touched us to speak with you who are watching us now, who have been watching us, and you've been hearing the Word of God here in our live transmissions. And that still remains lost, lost, disoriented, without knowing what to do with your life. You've come to a point that you don't know what to do anymore. You are completely disoriented. But you want a word. You are seeking for a word. And this is why we are here. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants to turn your life into a brand new life, into a different life, life of quality, so that He, God, His name, God's name, may be sanctified in your life as well. But you are lost. But don't be sad, because I have a message from Him to you. Very nice. Pay attention. God says, He said to the Israelites, and He's saying the same to His people today. You who are listening to me, and whoever listens to the voice of God becomes the people of Israel, God's people. Pay attention. God said like this through the prophet Jeremiah, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown, which means that God was many years later, hundreds of years later, he was talking to his people. He was talking to Israel. And he said to them, Look, I remember you. I remember you. I remember the kindness of your youth. The love of your betrothal. You can imagine the love of of a couple that is being engaged. I don't know if you've ever been engaged, but when we are engaged, we only think of the day of the wedding. We are looking forward to the day of the wedding. We are so anxious. It's something natural from a couple that is betrothed to one another. They want to see the day of the wedding coming quickly because we want to be with the person that we so love, that we so want to be 
close to. Very well. God uses this very peculiar language. And he, as God, he knows. He's wonderful. He knows what the love of a couple about to get married is like. He knows. He knows. However, you perhaps got married and your marriage was a disaster. You divorced and you tried to get married again and it was undone again. You are perhaps in the third, fourth marriage. It doesn't matter. The worst of all is that you still haven't found yourself. You haven't become this happy person yet because you are seeking this happiness that you so dream of. You are seeking for it through a new relationship. Very well. God places himself as the husband or as the fiancé that was rejected by his bride, who was abandoned, who was betrayed by his bride. Israel betrayed the Lord. And he's saying to these people, and he's saying to you right now, I remember I remember you. I remember the kindness of your youth. I remember the love of your betrothal. Do you remember, dear friends, of the days in the beginning when you were so loyal, so faithful, you would go to church with that thirst and hunger to hear the word of God. You would pray, you would fast, you would do any sacrifice in order to be in communion with God. However, for a reason or the other, you stopped looking at him, the author of love, to the love of your betrothal or the love of your groom, rather. And you started looking at other people with malice, with ill feelings. And you, little by little, distanced yourself from your groom. That's what God is saying to Israel. And He's telling you as well, who are lost, seeking, seeking for a word. Very well. The Holy Spirit is directing me. He's using me to speak to you because as he used Jeremiah, the prophet, he uses us to speak to you. It only depends on you, your life, your future, your reconciliation with your groom only depends on you because he has his arms wide open. His arms are still open. This week, we are now in the Holy Week, right in the middle of the Holy Week, a week that is separate for those who want to reconcile to the Lord, to return to the Lord, because He is stretching out His hands towards you so that you can come back to Him straight away. Don't you wait for A, B, or C. Only wait for yourself. Yourself. And above all, 
for the one who is reaching out his hand to you. This week of the Holy Spirit, these final days of the fast of Daniel, for those who want to receive the Holy Spirit, you who are listening to me and are there full of mud, because he says here, he says here, Israel was holiness to the Lord. Do you remember that? You wore holiness to the Lord. Everyone who would look at you would even be envious of your groom, of your bride. The Lord is the, the groom, and you, whether you are a man or a woman, we are the bride. You are the bride. So people would look at you and would be envious. Oh, I wish I had a groom like she does, like he does. He is reaching out his hand to you. He is telling you, return to me. Return to me. Return to me. And I will return to you. Return to me. And I will return to you. That's all. It doesn't cost anything. Right there, where you are, in this very moment, you who are sad, desperate, hopeless, you don't believe anything anymore, you grew colder and colder, and all of a sudden you, you are like an ice cube. However, God continues to be the same. His Spirit speaks to you right now, dear friends. His Spirit is jealous of you. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit is jealous of those who are His. And when someone turns away from Him and betrays Him and follows all the gods, all the things that are not the groom, then he gets sad. Yes, God gets sad because of you. He suffers because of you. Just as you've suffered when you were abandoned, thrown away, excluded, rejected, humiliated, God suffers for you. He suffers. But He cannot impose His will on your life. He cannot force you to follow Him because an engagement, an engagement is something so sublime, so holy, it's a promise that they make to one another. I will be yours on the day of, of the wedding. We are going to seal this love. The love of our engagement will be sealed. It's coming soon. Very soon. Jesus is at the door. However, for some reason, You've turned your back on him, and he's reaching out his hand to you. He is reaching out his hand to you right now. And there is still time for you to return to that love that you had in the beginning, the first love. Do you remember? Do you remember your first love? Do you remember? Very well your first love with the Lord Jesus. Everything was new. Everything was beautiful. Everything was like a dream. But all of a sudden, everything changed into chaos. Yeah, dear friends, 
read with attention this chapter 2 of Jeremiah. For sure, the Holy Spirit will speak a lot more than what I'm speaking to you here. He will speak to you. But go back. Give one step towards Him and He will run towards your direction because He doesn't want to lose you. He doesn't want to lose you. He is more interested in filling you with life, with joy, with Himself. He wants to fill you with himself. He wants to enter you, to dwell within you. But he cannot transgress your will. He cannot force you to do that. This has to be spontaneous and freely. It's like an offering. An offering is something spontaneous and free. You give that offering, you give your life as an offering, just as He also gave His life as an offering for us, spontaneously. He wasn't forced. Therefore, dear friends, in the name of the Lord Jesus, there is still time. There is time. While there is life, there is hope. And I'm sure that right there where you are, you can get on your knees, perhaps even place your face on the ground and ask Him for forgiveness. Oh, my Father, forgive me. I repent having left you. I repent everything I've done up until now. I was blaming others, but no, I am the one to blame. I have been the one at fault, and I repent. Take my life now. Let your will be done. Just give me your love, your first love, the love of our betrothal, the love that is full, that is full of hope, expecting for the day of the wedding, and this day is near. May God bless you, dear friend. Chapter 2 of Jeremiah. Read it with care. Israel here is you. Here, Israel is you. Don't forget that. He says, I remember you. The love of your betrothal, which means that he hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. He didn't forget you. He didn't forget those moments, those happy moments that he and you had together in communion. He went to start all over again with you, okay? Then do that. Put your knees on the ground and talk to him. My Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me. I repent. I return to you. Take my life. Spontaneously, I'm here now. You are going to receive the Holy Spirit straight away. May God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God.